The very first time you sit behind the wheel of a boat can be a little bit intimidating, especially in some of your bigger high dollar bass boats. And something that I have a lot of people ask me questions about as I travel around is the trim control. What is it for? How does it work? So we're going to cover some of the real basics today. Now, like I said, we're going to go over a basic trim type of a system. I'm not talking about a hydraulic jack plate where you can make adjustments there. This is just a fixed jack plate and the trim with that type of a very basic system. Now, depending on the boat, your trim could also be on the column. I have owned lots of boats with the trim on the column, and that is by far my favorite because it keeps both hands on the wheel but the trim on this particular aluminum boat is here on the throttle or the gear shift control so this is where i will be talking about it now what does the trim do just very basically it tips your motor either tucks it underneath the hull or it will start to move it up and towards the surface of the water and depending on whether or not you're just getting a boat from a resting position up on the plane or what type of waves and chop you're driving through, you need to adjust the trim to different points. So let's go ahead and jump into that. First thing, though, I do want to make sure I mention always is when you're driving a boat, have your life jacket on. And most importantly, this kill switch needs to be attached. So very, very important. So just get in the habit of that. So the first thing we want to talk about is how to trim the boat when we are ready to take off and get up on pad. So let me start the boat up here. And then right now my motor is sitting with the prop pretty much straight out. Okay, so if I'm just going to idle the boat, I want to make sure that I have got the boat trimmed with the prop going straight out, not tucked up underneath when you want to be very maneuverable. Okay, so when you're in a marina, in a no-wake zone, or in a high traffic area, you want to keep that prop pushing straight out the back. But let's say now I want to get up on pad, I'm going to make a run. This is when I'm going to trim the motor down, so you can probably hear it go down. Okay, and there it stopped. It is now tucked up underneath the hull which means that that prop is pushing down. It's going to give me lift. And as I get lift and I start to get up, I'm gonna put that throttle down. And then once I feel that boat start to lift, I'm gonna go ahead and start to trim the motor back. So I have more of the energy being pushed out straight out the back as opposed to going straight down like this. So let's go ahead and get it up on pad real quick. And you'll hear the trim. All right, so I'm getting up, it's lifted up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start to trim the motor up. And you can see we start to pick up speed, okay? All right, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down. Okay, so you can see by keeping that tucked up underneath, most of your bass boats will get up on pad or plane very, very quickly. And then, like I said, then once you're up on plane, you can go ahead and start to trim that motor back and then you're going to have better boat operation and control and more efficiency getting that kinetic energy from your motor and then out into the water to push the boat. Now one thing that I do see quite often is people often will over trim the boat. If you've seen a boat running down the lake and it's got a 25, 30 foot rooster tail just kicking out the back, it may look incredibly cool. But actually, the majority of your energy is being wasted. You are pushing it up and out of the water instead of keeping that prop down in the water. And then the most energy is pushing straight back. So you don't want a giant sized rooster tail. That's a really good indicator that you are over trimmed and not getting the maximum efficiency out of your outboard motor. Now, other places that you may need to trim, when you go to get into a turn, you're starting to make a turn. If you are trimmed up a little bit too high, you will feel the motor slip. It won't grab anymore. It's like getting it into an air pocket. To rectify that situation, you may have to go ahead and trim the motor back down a touch if you are in a pretty sharp turn. The other place that you're going to want to adjust that trim is when you're coming into some chop. If, if you're out on the water and you have some small chop, you know, some wakes, boat wakes, but they aren't too terribly big, 
the best way to handle that is to go ahead and trim down and that's going to bring your bow down and let the bow cut through those waves be a very smooth stable ride for sure now like i said that's when you have small chop or just small boat wakes that you're dealing with if they start to get a little bit larger, you don't want to spear them. So you don't want that bow to be down digging into a big wave. That is where you're going to have to slow the boat down and then go ahead and trim it so your bow is up just a little bit and then it will cut through some of those larger waves. But the key there, especially with irregular boat wakes that can just come out of nowhere is make sure that you slow it down i've seen so many times that people try to hop them or jump them or you know skip from wave to wave to wave and next thing you know they spear one and their trolling motors ripped off that bow I've seen entire grass get tore off boats because somebody was not driving through the conditions carefully so be really really aware of the size of the boat wakes that you have but your trim function if you watch your rpms can really make a big difference as far as the efficiency that you're getting out of your motor and really smooth your ride up another thing that i see often are boats hopping down the lake Ba boom 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 they're not jumping waves it's just the the bow is slapping like this that means that they are over trimmed. You wanna pull that trim back down and that bow is gonna come down and it's gonna smooth your ride right out. So I hope that this helps you out a little bit. If you would like to watch a video that talks about first bass boat purchases, go ahead and check this one out right here. I think you'll find it interesting. And don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know, I might just change their life. For the bass fishing life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.